If you've been watching the national news, you might have heard about this race for governor in New York State, where one of the candidates named Carl Paladino probably hates gay people. It seems like he really does not like gay people to me. There's a lot more issues in that in New York State. Uh, one of the important issues in New York State is this technique of drilling for natural gas called hydrofracking or hydraulically fracturing. Because there's a lot of natural gas in New York State. But what they do is they, they fracture the rock underneath your place with chemicals and water and they end up polluting the groundwater. After that, your property is worthless. So it's kind of an important issue in New York State. It turns out Carl Palladino agrees that hydrofracking is risky, but uh, his only concern about it is that it doesn't affect New York City. So expensive and so... Thank you very much, folks. Thank you. in the area, in the watershed area for New York City, but certainly to the west of it. So complete support. That's it. Thank you very much, folks. Complete support. Yeah. Thank no you. To the west of that. Thank you. Mr. Paul, do you John, feel please. about foreign industry? Hydrofracking in upstate New York is all right, as long as it's outside of the watershed of New York City? Uh, yeah, until they complete that study, and then, uh, and then we'll take it from there as to the watershed and see if there's any adverse effect on that. We don't want to take any risks in the watershed area right now. In the nice watershed of New York. Guys, it's done. For Carl Palladino, it's like a risky experiment, which it is. But that's okay with him, as long as it doesn't affect New York City. I guess if you live outside of New York City, you're screwed. Are you traveling this Christmas? If you are, you'll probably be going to the airport. And if you do, you may be going through one of those new airport scanners. And you might be worried about the x-rays, because they are x-ray machines. But the news has mostly been covering your nudity. If you're concerned about your health with those x-ray machines, as we were, you'd want to hear from a guy that we talked to today, here in California, at the University of California, San Francisco, Dr. Sadat. I'm Dr. Sadat. Professor Emeritus of Biochemistry. Or would there be some people that would be more sensitive, more at risk from... That's been documented very carefully. Approximately 5% of the population has a different sensitivity to these x-rays. And it just raises the question, should all, all populations go through this? People who've, who are more susceptible to skin cancer would be more at risk from this type of exposure then. I can tell you from personal experience that, that that's certainly going to be, the, be tr true in my case. And, and <laughs> so, not being a spring chicken, I'm, I'm almost surely not going through this machine. Say so people who burn easily, um, would they also be more at risk? Should they also contact their doctor before being exposed to this type of radiation? It'd probably be a smart thing to do. The most troubling aspect of these machines is that they've been evaluated according to an old standard called effective dose, which is usually used for machines that filter out this type of skin-absorbed x-rays. In fact, the standard, kind of like a good housekeeping seal of approval, is mathematically constructed to give less weight to radiation that's absorbed by the skin, just the type of radiation that these airport scanners put out. Here's Dr. Peter Rez, professor of physics at Arizona State University. And so there's a quantity called an effective dose, which basically sums over doses of all parts of the body and it gives different weighting factors to different organs, with bigger oh. weighting factors being in organs in the middle of the body. So what that does is that lowers why? the, the why dose. Would you, why would you make a scale that gave... Uh, a more weight to the organs in the middle of the body. Because they're the ones where you're more likely to get cancer. But isn't the greatest number of cancers skin cancer? Don't more people yeah, get skin cancer? Yeah, but the rationale, this is all done by the ICRP. The rationale is that, my, if you read their stuff, is that most skin cancers are not fatal. Well, but if they're discovered... Uh, that's, that's not true. much comfort. Is it for people well, that, getting I, I personally do not like effective dose. Uh -huh. Hello? Is your refrigerator running? 
All of the professionals we spoke to said they would not stand within two yards of the new scanners and wouldn't go through them for health reasons. Some because of the type of radiation in the dose and its delivery method, and some because of the potential for malfunctions that would increase the dose to a level that would be extremely unhealthy. Well, what makes this machine more likely to fail than a normal x-ray unit is its mechanical complexity. Mm -hmm. You have this tube going up and down while rock and rocking at the same time. You've got this mechanical, heavy mechanical um, chopper wheel going around at a very high mm -hmm. speed attached to that. You've got scintillator panels moving with that. And that's a lot of bits that are moving. It's what happens if the machine fails. These machines scan almost like an old-fashioned television set. That is correct. Right? And if that scan were to slow down for whatever reason, what would have happened to the person who, at that point, if the machine had malfunctioned, would be getting a dose of x-rays in one spot? Then they get a very high dose. Uh, would they know it? Uh, they might not know it at the time. Let's compare it with uh, hospital x-rays. Mm -hmm. uh, there, the machines will be operated by trained radiology technicians. These are called backscatter machines. And although most of the x-rays that they put out are absorbed by the body, some of them do bounce back. And those are the x-rays that the machines use for imaging. But the fact that they bounce off you means that a TSA agent standing nearby is getting some small dose every time. The person that's getting x-rayed is also scattering x-rays out the side. And this is here? And this is uh, someone else who's scanning at the entrance surface, presumably a TSA person. And they <laughs> would be receiving some backscatter from the... Uh, well, they machine, they, right? they re yeah, they're receiving what's called a scatter dose. And the a scatter, scatter dose, dose was remarkably high compared to the primary dose. So I wouldn't get within three... I wouldn't... So I wouldn't get within three feet of those machines. Uh, on our site, you'll find links to some of the few scientific papers written about the rapid scan backscatter machines, and a link to a letter written by Dr. Sadat and some of his colleagues to the White House. And remember Michael Chertoff, Homeland Security Secretary during Katrina? Well, he's the guy that was really pushing these machines, and within months of leaving the cabinet, his company got a big contract with RapidScan. Merry Christmas.